These wholesome American beauties are vying to be crowned Miss Teen International, devoting themselves to clean living and poised, polished perfection. You're a puppet. These girls live on the mean streets of Manchester, the Asbo capital of England. Between them, they've been cautioned, convicted and condemned. But in six short weeks, one of these nine mischievous Mancunians will represent England in the USA, hoping to return home with the title Miss Teen International 2006. Expect style. This dress and shoes are doomed me, Adam. Expect grace. Believe me, I do not give a but don't expect world peace. When I go on stage, I will say it. You need to sort your head out. I swear they need punching now. In America, beauty pageants are big business. Every year, thousands of girls compete to win state, national and international titles, vying not only to be crowned beauty queens, but to win prizes worth thousands of dollars. The most prestigious American pageant is the Miss Teen International Contest, held in Chicago, Illinois. It's all about family values and squeaky clean feminine virtue. A beauty queen should carry herself on the stage very elegantly and not provocative. <laughs> it's in this extravaganza that one of the nine girls will be competing as Miss Teen England International. Nine English roses have been plucked from Manchester. Their world's no glamorous pageant, but it has taught them unique life skills. Robbing people, street robbery. Getting high. Assault. Burglary. Using abusive language in the streets. Drinking and smoking. Shoplifting and criminal damage. Turning this blighted bunch into beauty queens will be a thorny problem. But riding to the rescue is a real life former American beauty queen. Mrs. International 2003 is Mrs. Nevada Michelle Fryatt. She's accepted the challenge of creating an English pageant contender in six short weeks. As a pageant veteran herself, she knows what that takes. We'll find that a lot of the girls who are going to be at Miss Teen International have been preparing for it for, for months, if not years. But I feel a lot of responsibility, like a, just to educate the girls, to open their eyes, to um, share with them what they can achieve and who they can become and really help them in a process of self-discovery and self-growth. The nine English contenders will face challenges designed by Michelle to reduce them to just three finalists. They'll fly to Chicago where one of them will be crowned Miss Teen England International and compete in the lucrative Miss Teen International pageant. This girl will face three rounds based on presentation, including sportswear, evening wear and fun fashion. She'll also compete in a public speaking round where she'll advocate a charitable cause close to her heart. I will need to see girls that, that want to go forward and if one lacks a little bit of motivation, that could be, that could be what takes her out of the competition. But at the moment, it's still all to play for. Our nine aspiring beauty queens are about to meet Michelle for the first time. Hi, I'm Michelle, and I will be your mentor over the next six weeks. And it's my job to equip you and train you and give you the tools that you will need to do well at Miss Teen International. Do any of you know anything at all about beauty pageants? Had any, any experience with them at all? OK. What I'm going to do now is just kind of show you a clip from Miss Teen International just to give you a little taste of what pageant week is like, OK? In 2005, Chicago became home to three of America's premier beauty <laughs> Come join us in Chicago for the International Pageants of 2006.
Okay, girls. Anybody darting for the door? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> you guys all look a little scared. It really is fun, I promise. Miss Teen International image is incredibly important because she's a role model to thousands of girls. So this week's challenge is to look like a beauty queen. Over the next few days, we're going to teach you how to accomplish this look. And then at the end of the week, we will pick this week's teen beauty queen. And unfortunately, one of you will be asked to go home. What I'd like for you to do, you're going to just look in your closet and pick out what makes you feel the most glamorous. And come back in the morning, and you're going to be all gla like glam, glam, as much as you know how to glam. I've all got track suits. Right? That's all you've got? Well, then pick your most glamorous track suit, then. I know it's a bit daunting, and I know it's a completely unknown world for you. But you know what? Just, just grab on to the opportunity to learn something new. The girls' first challenge is to glam up. Tomorrow, Michelle will begin their beauty queen training in earnest because in six weeks, one of these girls must represent her country as the first ever Miss Teen England International. I thought, don't be afraid, because they all looked so intimidated at the sight of me that I really wanted to, to comfort them and reassure them and, and let them know, you know, it's okay, I'm a person just like you, because they all looked a little, a little scared at the whole prospect, I think. But she was a tall, lanky model. I was just baffled. I was thinking, I can't do this. I think it'll be hard <laughs> working on me anyway. I thought the dancing that I did was stupid. It was that way, dancing on stage. We don't have to do that, do we? These girls have no concept of what being in a pageant consists of. And um, it's one thing to learn how to do your hair and learn how to do your makeup. It's another thing to, to learn how to speak and learn how to present yourself and to embrace a cause that you feel passionate about. I think this is going to be really difficult. Nine prospective beauty queens have been challenged to present their most glamorous outfits. If they want to compete in the USA for the title of Miss Teen International, then success in this challenge is crucial. The girl's mentor, former American beauty queen Michelle Fryatt, is already weighing their potential. Well, now that I've seen all the girls, I, I am a bit nervous because we need to mold them into a role model in a very short period of time. Each one has a challenge to overcome. It's not like there's one in the group that's like, okay, right, let's go on down the road and do this. Each one has their own individual issue to tackle. I'm a little nervous about a couple of them that may have issues with alcohol or um, really vagrant behavior. You're the Muppet. While some of the other girls do have issues, Michelle's particularly concerned by the only girl with an ASBO, the aptly named Laura Wilde. I think I've been arrested about ten times, just mostly mostly for like you know, like using abusive language in the streets, like public order and stuff like that. Um, assault and criminal damage. Oh, dickhead. Oh. Oh, right, just go with I mean she's my daughter and we still love her no matter what, even though we don't approve of what she's done or how she's gone about things. When the police were knocking on the door and we were going to court, I was always thinking to myself, I wish somebody would just take her away and give us a bit of space and a bit of peace. Did I say smoke? You go and bang me out, go for it, because you're so f***ing hard, you little f***. Hi, <laughs> girlies. Michelle's also facing a trial with Rachel, and she's hoping the 18-year-old won't be facing any trials of her own. I was only in court a couple of weeks ago. The burglary charges, two charges of that. I got locked up twice in one in one week, so when I went court, it made it look bad and that. So it was a bit out of proportion and that for me. Yo, watch some video now about these American. You know how the American girls are all. Oh, yeah, they think they're all that, in it. Oh. Why was that? Video. My face was just like <laughs> at first, and it just went. Well, you know when you know when you yeah like these long dresses and that when where you have to walk. Well, you know with the thing that yeah, goes yeah, across, yeah, around you like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you that will say Miss Ra Bates or something, and you have to oh, walk right. now. And then the other girl will walk past you now. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I'm gonna have to be like back shoulders back and walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. 
With seven of the nine aspiring beauty queens having had a brush with the law, Michelle has her work cut out. On the one hand, while several of these girls have a little bit of an unfortunate story to tell, that's all the more powerful at the Miss Teen International level, that, that we can take them from something unfortunate in their lives to, right now I'm ready to be a role model for others, and this is my mission. The girls' first challenge is to present themselves in their most glamorous outfits. But what do they define as glamour? Yeah, bomber dunce at that bum still. Some leather type jeans and that, you know. Tight jeans are so tight bottom. And the leather. <laughs> You're not ready, girls. Trackies. Trackies. More trackies. Baggy t-shirts. <laughs> Body jumper. Ooh, got some dungarees here. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're all right then. Oh, well, they're not too yeah. dressy. That's what I mean, I need something dressy in it. That's all I've got. Just buy clothes. So I've got no look for tomorrow unless one of my mates will come to my rescue. Yeah, my style icon is Victoria Beckham because she don't wear nothing cheap, does she? I would say Colleen, but she shops at Primark. I stick to a dress. Stick to a dress? Yeah. Well, they all look nice on, don't they? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? I quite like the black one myself. I'd go for the black one if I was you. So I'm saying you could wear these with a brown top or something and a pair of bum heels. You've got bare heels anyway. That would look nice with some wet, wet no black pick, wickle pickers or something, isn't it? That is some <laughs> Missy Elliott crip shit. Isn't it? <laughs> Naughty. The next day, as the girls arrive, it's clear they've interpreted the challenge to glam up in their own unique ways. Sarah's sober black dress is too subdued for a glitzy pageant. Eleanor's downmarket denim definitely isn't chic enough for Chicago. Shy Ashley hasn't been in trouble with the law, but this outfit really won't please the pageant police. And Laura's tracksuit bottoms and hoodie won't work out and the rest of the girls have fared no better. Good morning, girls. Good morning. Hi. How did we do last night? Let me see. We have some good results. Some of you put effort into this morning. Some more than others. Spiffy tracksuit, right? And I appreciate the effort, but you know what? We have a little bit of work to do to really get that beauty queen look. So, come on, come with me. Michelle's laid on a limo to whisk the girls to their next destination and the next stage of their training. In just six weeks, one of them will become Miss Teen England International, a paragon of gentility and grace. Oh, shit! Realising the enormity of the task, Michelle's wheeled out the big guns in personal presentation. Renowned makeup artist Ruby Hammer and award-winning hairstylist Beverly C. They'll show the girls how to get the beauty queen look. OK, girls, as you know, this week's challenge is to look like a beauty queen. But to be fair, we need to teach you how to do this, right? Good. So gratefully, we've got two of Britain's very best in the business to help us do this. You need to pay really close attention to this process because in just 48 hours' time, you're going to need to completely recreate it all on your own. But before Ruby and Beverly get to grips with the girls, Michelle wants each girl to be individually assessed. 18-year-old Rachel's first in line for a constructive critique. <laughs> Not the look you need to be going for. Um, yes, to go out here, fantastic. Great personal style. Mm. But it is a nice got, personal yeah. style, isn't it? <laughs> you've got to adopt... Teen Queen style now, and maybe your little piercing's got to go. We need to work on our confidence, cos she bites her lip and, and hides them and all the time. Yeah, your, <laughs> body, that you your body language is saying that you're really not comfortable in your own skin, yeah. right? Now, you were, you were one that I saw yesterday, and I thought, you know what? She has no idea how stunning she is, and um, I'm really anxious to see what Beverly and, and Ruby have in store for you, because I think you're just going to be quite shocked when you see the finished product and how, now, the how gorgeous you are. How about you, <laughs> Pavia? Come up here and join me. 
I think overall her look that she's created for herself today mm -hmm. is far too day. It's very dressed down, isn't it? Yeah. It's certainly not the level that you, you'd need to do for a pageant, so we need to I up think the you, ante. You're going to need to step it up a little and make sure you're really polished and groomed. Laura, why don't you go ahead and join me up here with the experts? Okay, do you want them to go ahead and, and evaluate your overall look from where you are? I'm curious as to what you're doing here then, young <laughs> lady. Do you want to go to America to yeah. be the last three? You do. Because if you do, we're here, actually here to help you create the look to get you to that level of going over to Chicago. Okay. Come on, we're here to help you. Come up. Good girl. Look at you, yay! yay. I think when we first met all the girls this morning, uh, they did find it very difficult to sort of communicate and, and sort of work with us. And they felt that we were going to be, you know, attacking them and, and trying to change them as people, and we're not. There was, you know, a few brick walls up there this morning. I love wearing tracksuits. That's what I relax in. I have comfort. You don't have to worry about your figure, nothing. But you're not going to win this pageant if you if you go in your trackies. Piercings or rings or tattoos or anything like that, you have to take them off. The girls finish their consultation, then each of them receives expert advice to accentuate their assets. Later, their beauty pageant looks will be revealed to them for the first time. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a start. The rest, start. Will, the rest will have to go. In the meantime, 18-year-old Sarah isn't impressing hairstylist Beverly. A couple of the girls have turned up today with very sort of greasy hair. You have today as well. You've got a bit greasy hair there, I can say, going on. Um, and they need to keep that really on top of that mm -hmm. as well. And Ruby doesn't think she's achieved a makeup masterpiece either. You almost look like a sort of an old painting, you know, because you're, you're, you're quite... It's not retro, but, you know, it's quite old-fashioned. And I think what we have to do is just kick in a little bit of... Modernity, you know, mm -hmm. keep, just make you a little bit more hip. I swear they need punch in there. <gasps> Do you? I ain't no yeah, makeup girl, what they're trying to turn me into. And pay all the while, I know that anyway, but still, I don't care. She, she's got no right to say it when she's got about ten layers of makeup on. Who would you laugh and I'd say, yeah, you're dead brown, you're pretty, you'd be the next <laughs> gay no, but she, 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 she goes, would you? Know. She goes, oh, most of the girls have had greasy hair. Most of us? Yeah. She's cheeky, man. I washed mine this morning. <laughs> She no, isn't even either. brushed. <laughs> said I look like an old portrait. I'm, I'm younger than them, so how, how they're the ones that are the old portraits. They're the, the model's 42 and she's trying to tell me stuff. She's the one that needs to go babysit her grandkids. The makeover's in full swing, but pageant success is about more than just looking the part. Unfortunately, it's just it's not enough to just dress like a beauty queen. You have to you have to embrace the image and feel proud about it. Find a bit good clothes. Not enough things like that. And have the desire to want to present yourself well. Beauty queen needs to know what style is. That's what she needs to know. And that may be the biggest hurdle that we have. And those people need to know how to do hair. Dyeing it the same color as it was, that's not much of a change. Sarah's really got 100% convinced that we're not going to change her at all. Uh, she thinks that at the end of the day, once she looks in the mirror, she's going to see the same Sarah that sort of woke up this morning. Um, and she's quite mistaken, because we have changed her quite a bit. Oh, that looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting all day to get paper on my head. No, it's not funny. <sighs> I hope I better win for doing this, swear to God. Do you think you will? No. What do you think a beauty queen looks like? Be Miss America. Beauty queen. Miss America? No. Britney Spears before she had a baby. Right. So if you represent Miss England, we're going to look at you and say, wow, she's, she, she's the epitome of England. If I go, I swear, I'm going to tell Miss America to shut up, pageant of brass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... That's what I'm going to say to her. Ah, I am. That's amazing. I think you stand a very good chance, sweetheart. Your diplomacy is amazing. <laughs> The girls know that tomorrow they'll be judged on their skill in recreating the pageant look. Competition's hotting up and Pavia's appraising her rival, Ellen. As Ellen's the shyest of the bunch, Laura springs to her defence. You're not special, are you? I will see what the 
I want. Yeah. I'm just saying it's tight because I think it is tight. Please believe me, I do not give a I am not getting told what the and what I can say by anybody. I'll say what I want. Oh, you need to sort your head out. Pavio, wow. she could be slagging any. She could. She probably is slagging me off me behind me back even before this happened. Yeah. Because she's saying things about the girl. Can't be asked arguing with her anyway. She can. But I like it. As the argument subsides, the makeover process is reaching a crescendo. However, the girls need to have paid attention to the experts because in 48 hours they have to recreate the look all on their own. Michelle, Beverly and Ruby have worked their magic, but since the girls are still a little sceptical about pageant style, they won't be allowed to see their new look until the makeover is complete. I can't wait to see myself in there, that was going to be weird, because I don't usually wear dresses, so... I'm really excited to see what the hair looks like, because I've had a lot cut off it. I'm scared because I'm, I'm scared because I don't know what my hair's going to look like. And you have got me in a dress. Well, that's the first thing for everything, isn't it? But I'm excited anyway. So you best study up and show us. Rachel was styled for the mean streets. The panel have tamed her tresses and turned up the glamour. Sarah was relaxed in denim, but her hair was very uptight. The experts have given her the full pageant look. 24 hours ago, Laura was a rough and tumble tomboy. She's lost her tracksuits and the piercings, and the panel have cut and coloured her hair. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow. What is over there? What do you think? Bombuck. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! I look weird. <laughs> <laughs> the other girls got the works too. Hair's been trimmed and teased, eyebrows have been plucked, and each girl's been styled to maximise her unique assets. The pageant hopefuls must be so thrilled. It's speechless. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. I don't like anything. My hair, oh my god. I can't stand it. I hate it. I drew over my eyebrows and made them look really bushy. And I don't like it. You look really pleased with it. Don't like it. What have you done to me? I look like a barber. A barber gone wrong. I'm really disheartened because they all were had a lot of reservations and it was a little bit hard to get positive feedback from them about the results and that that discourages me. Okay. What do you not like about your hair? Everything. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like it at all. And can you find anything that you do like? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate to admit this to say this out loud but I I have very low expectations for the results on Friday. I, and the reason I feel that way is because I just don't, I didn't see any of these girls really embracing the look. So how can they be motivated to recreate a look they don't even like? So if one of them comes in truly looking like a beauty queen, I will be very pleasantly surprised. This is the Miss Teen International Pageant in Chicago, USA. These American girls have been preparing for years to compete for the coveted crown. However, in just six weeks, one of nine mischievous Manchester maidens will become the first Miss Teen England International and challenge them for the title. Former Mrs International Michelle Fryatt is mentoring the girls. Their first challenge was to look like a beauty queen. Michelle invited two experts to give the girls the pageant look, but now they have to recreate it on their own and they'll be judged on their success. They're going to have to embrace the look and they're going to have to want to have the desire to not only recreate it, but to present it and feel good with it. And I can see we've got miles to go before they feel good looking like beauty queens. <laughs> 
The girls have been given £100 to help them dress like a beauty queen. Pageant dresses are long, classic and modest. And with tomorrow's crucial test looming, they'll need to bear this in mind as they hit the shops. Well, this is the first time I've ever bought a dress, so I think we'll get a nice outfit, some shoes and some accessories to go with it. Competitive Kerry is ready to use all her assets to win. I'll we'll need a long dress, basically like I had on yesterday. Something that'll show my legs, but not too much. Um, I'll go all around, I'll go all around um, until I've found something. While Kerry's competing with the other girls, Eleanor's competing with the judges. The dress they picked for me yesterday was granified and it was disgusting. So I'm going to find one that's nice for me <laughs> to prove that I could dress better than them. Nothing else that's nice. <laughs> oh, I'm here. Oh. I'm buying a dress. Don't let me buy nothing else apart from a dress. I'm looking for a dress, a nice dress up dress. If we're not a dress up dress, <laughs> that's nice. Because you've got the badge as well at the back and everything else. The girls were harsh critics of Michelle's makeover, so are they still unconvinced by the pageant look? <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. What kind of people wear this? My nana wouldn't even wear that. Laura, however, has left her hoodie behind and is heading for the heels. That is amazing. Should I try one of these on? Yeah. I couldn't really tell how Laura felt at the reveal. She seemed not so negative, but I didn't really see a whole lot of positive there either. She was, I think she was somewhere neutral, which was really a good sign to me that she was at least giving it a chance. So I'll be really curious to see what kind of effort she makes towards recreating it. Check this socks. <laughs> well, I think Laura entering the pageant means a lot to her. I think she thinks now that she can actually prove to people that she can do something and follow it through and show that she can behave and be responsible. Meanwhile, with the next challenge looming, Pavia's getting some makeup practice at home. They made me eyes look like clown eyes yesterday. They put about this much of them. It's all up here. Mad stuff about this much. It is lots of this like this. Give her some more. Give her some more. Minging. It's like drawing under here like this. Look like I was going in for plastic surgery and they was marking off where they wanted to do it for me. Turn me into a drag queen then, not a beauty queen. I would not even dare step out of the house dressed like that. I was quite shocked almost at Pavia's reaction because I think she looked the least dramatically different. They really just enhanced the beauty that's already there, but yet she acted like it was such a d dramatic difference and that it was all negative, and I was really, really surprised by that. I know what I like and I know what, what I'm about. I wanted to kick her in head. But for Michelle, there will be more revelations in store tomorrow when the girls unveil their interpretation of the pageant look. With so much riding on today's challenge, a newly enthused Laura's up early and stealing herself for the trial ahead. I do think I'm trying my best on this. So I'd be gutted if I didn't get through because it is the best thing that do you know I've ever do you know I went for if you know what I mean. Nah, I'm alright. I'm not feeling big headed, but I'm feeling not not like unconfident and feeling. I'm all right. If I went, I'd be devastated. <laughs> I'd be gutted, yeah, of course I would. It was only the first week, in it, so I wouldn't want to go. But while the other girls are facing the day with trepidation, Sarah's facing the day with a hangover after a late-night party. There's someone called Jesus in the living room and someone called Eddie in my bed. I'm feeling miserable. Cos I'm tired. When I get there, I want to find somewhere to go sleep. I'm going to be like this all day if I don't. I haven't even learned anything from the experts because I don't like their advice. But she told us to recreate that look, and I'm not recreating something that looks gay. 
Today, the girls have to prove whether they can recreate the beauty queen look themselves. By the day's end, one of them will have been eliminated. Hey girls, how was the shopping? Good. We transformed your outside the other day from one look to the other. And I really want you to start trying to embrace that new self-image of yourself. As, as you know, as a beauty queen, you're making appearances all the time. And you, sometimes you don't have much time at all to get yourselves ready. So now we're going to give you 45 minutes. So I want you to get all glammed up. Glam, glam, glam. Remember, glam as you can. Everybody up for it? Yeah. Can I hear some enthusiasm? Yeah. Yay! OK, so girls, I will see you all super glammed in 45 minutes. Right now, I have absolutely zero, zilch, nada, no confidence that they're going to be able to pull this off. I hope that I'm pleasantly surprised, but I'm pretty skeptical. He's burning me, burnt myself in my face, burnt my hand. I feel like he's punching that world into me and feel burnt. Yeah, I forgot to bring my makeup, but I only had, I only had shit stuff anyway. I went to buy mascara and it was £20. Got £20 pound from the mascara. They must be mad. Sarah's not the most, or doesn't come across as the most confident in her sort of self. And I think she needs to realise, yes, learn the techniques, grab them, try to recreate them, but also bolster up your own confidence. <laughs> no one can do that. It's got to come from inside. Ah! I am curling my eyelashes to make them longer and flick up. Since the start of the challenge, Ruby's noticed a radical transformation in reluctant beauty queen, Laura. Everything about her was saying a big no. And she looked amazing. And I just, I just want to see now, can she pull it off herself? You know, piercings and things like that. Well, how will she pull it off? And I'm just curious to see that. No, it's not like everything's just going wrong at the moment. It's not going wrong at all. Are they even? No. They all seemed a bit despondent. I don't know if they're shell-shocked, or if they're just overwhelmed, or if it's just an impossible feat to get the, the glam look going, but they all looked a little, I would say, scared to death. That might be the most accurate way to describe them. So hopefully, when I left the room, they revived themselves a little bit and, and got to work. I think everyone's tried the best to try and recreate the looks that they've done yesterday, which was a mess. The makeup, trying to basically get back to the makeup like they did was a bit hard. I think if I'm more of practice, I think I'll get a lot better at it. It's better than what they put on me because that was just grannified. And them granny shoes, what the <laughs> were they? A lot of what I think I'm going to be looking for is attitudinally. The idea is to to have that whole mindset shift. So I'll be really, I'm really anxious about today to see if these girls have applied what they were shown, not just physically, but from the inside as well. Our nine girls are about to learn their fate from Michelle. So who succeeded in this week's challenge and who's failed to recreate the beauty queen look? First to confront the judges is 18 year old Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Let's go ahead and, and have a look at you after you went through the makeover. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you feel good in that dress? Did you like how that dress looked at on you? At first, I didn't feel really comfortable at first, but as I got used to it, I kind of enjoyed it. I, feel, I felt nice in it. That dress was quite a dramatic dress, but um, you haven't tried to recreate that makeup. You've gone for a more softer, feminine look with this, and I think it works. How do you feel about the way that you look today? I'm quite proud of myself, actually. I look more like a beauty queen. You do look more like a beauty queen. Let's see a picture of you after you'd had your makeover. That's amazing. What a difference. Mm. And you actually look very close today. I tried my best to like try and get it you know, the same like the makeup. And yeah. I think you've done a really good job with, with copying that for somebody who didn't used to wear much, did you? Didn't wear, wow. 
I personally am very impressed with Laura mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she's um, made some sacrifices and really took it on the chin, has gone with it, a lot of acceptance with what we needed to do. Good job. You are young and we have to keep the youthful element, but it doesn't look like you've got anything on your face now. And I think that's going to let you down. Oh, a bit of powder like just to take the shine away, because you're shining like a beacon here. And you're going to have to brush those skills up. If you choose to not engage in that part, then, then you, you aren't coming up to your full potential. What do you think about that picture? A lot more glamorous and ladylike anyway, but look a lot better, a lot better. You've done quite well with your hair, I have to say. You've got a nice movement in, in it and everything. Uh, all I would say is try and keep a little bit more volume at the top, because yes. again, it makes you look a little taller, yes. and it just balances just a little better. Right. But yeah, well done. Congratulations on your choice of dress. I have to say it's probably the, the best choice um, from the girls. She's kept it very graceful, just a little thing. It's very tasteful. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you listened to what we said and kept it very simple. You should feel good. Can I ask you a question? And I really want a direct answer from you. Did you wash your hair this morning? Last night. I saw you from like 20 feet away this morning and I could tell instantly you didn't wash your hair today. So um, I'm not surprised you couldn't do anything with your hair. You should have put a little bit more effort and, and you should wash your hair. You've done very well with the hair, I have to say. I would have liked to have seen you in a longer dress though. I would try to quite a few dresses on, but this one just looked nicer on me than the others. It's just not a pageant look. I think it needs to be a little more covered up and, and the length a little bit longer. We've picked a dress that it's kind of like the ones that they've put on there. It's kind of flowing. It's perhaps even more flattering to you. It's right. a lovely colour. But I noticed today you have on no makeup have at you all. Have got anything on? Is that you? nothing at all? I believe in a beauty, so it doesn't matter if I've got makeup on or not. I'm still beautiful in my own way. We just need to remember what our objective is, is to look like a beauty queen. You won't get anywhere if you skip that step. Well, we applaud you on the dress, but we just, we do need to work on the makeup. Well, let's see how you looked after you were in the hands of the experts. Don't like that look. You don't like that look. It's fair enough if you didn't like what we've done to you, but, but to just see that it was a steer to tell you, look, you would have to have some makeup, you'd have to choose whether that's too much or too little. Hair-wise, I think you've done very well, actually. I'm going to commend you on that. <laughs> you definitely have more of the look of a beauty queen now than you did at the beginning of the week. Well, we will see you later on this evening. All nine girls have been assessed, but before they learn their fate, there's a last-minute shock. Pavia's decided that she won't be attending the elimination. Instead, she's opted to go to a school leaving party. I'm a little disappointed to hear that you're going to have to cut out early. You know, I had really, you know, really high hopes for you this week. Just going forward, just be, you know, make a commitment and stick to it. And if you, if you knew about this in advance, then, then we have to respect that. Not like I'm just saying, right, well, I can't be bothered today, because I, I can I would stay, but... It's just my leavers do. It's really important. I'll look at all of the, all of the issues, but just, but just know that it's not, it's not, in your favor. Make your choice, and then we'll, we'll just go from there. Okay. Nine girls are hoping that they'll represent England at the Miss Teen International Pageant in Chicago. But one girl's dreams of the Windy City are about to be blown away. The feeling in the group is, and it's not tense, but it's a bit wobbly. We're not really, we're bothered about it, but we're not really bothered. It's just, we're all just feeling a bit, I don't know. Is it you? Is it me? Is it her? Is it you? You don't know. We're all dressed nice and everything. 
and I'll try it our best. We had a yelp day. I'll be gutted if it go, but I'm buzzing if someone else goes. Not for them, for me, because they're nasty, they won't have to. The panel set the nine pageant hopefuls a challenge of dressing like a beauty queen. Having assessed their efforts, they have to decide which girl to eliminate. How can you not wash your hair? It's not like she had extensions. It's easy. Right it's there, it's there. very evident, and she looks great, but she actually doesn't really believe it. It's a shame. She had on no makeup except for her mascara. Well, I have a problem with her is her attitude. Mm. Well, that, that says a lot. Make me have to question her commitment a little bit. Yeah. I think she thrives on negativity. I think, if anything, she needs to, to believe in herself a bit more. The beauty is not just, you know, on the outside, it's inside as well. OK, so I think as a result of this discussion, I feel like we're all on the same page. Yep. We're all pretty much in agreement about which yeah. way our decision's going to go. Yeah. Finally, it's time to hear the panel's verdict. Pavia's absconded, choosing to go to a party rather than attend the elimination. Hi, girls. Well, as you know, this week's challenge was to look like a beauty queen. And some of you really embraced this challenge, and some of you did not. But tonight, one of you will be selected as this week's teen beauty queen, and one of you will be asked to leave us. Laura. Laura, you did a wonderful job recreating the look. I think that you might have what it takes to be a teen beauty queen. So congratulations, you're going to move forward to next week. Carrie, we want to compliment you on the total look that you achieved. I do believe that you might have what it takes. Elena, the dress selection was a little, a little dodgy. It looked a little too clubby, not, not really so glamorous and certainly not pageant appropriate. With that said, I think you might have what it takes to be a teen beauty queen. Ashley, you did, you did a really good job with your hair. You might have what it takes. Rachel, your body language is something that you're going to have to improve on. With that said, you might have what it takes. Congratulations, you're moving forward. Nisha. You did a great job recreating a beauty, a beauty queen image. I do believe that you might have what it takes. Ellen, again, we really appreciated the selection that you made in your dress. Felt like you did a good job, again, replicating what was chosen for you, as well as something that really compliments you. You might have what it takes to be a teen beauty queen. Congratulations. Sarah. We were very disappointed in the total lack of effort that you put through with your makeup and with your hair. With that said, I think we're all aware that Pavia has already chosen to leave the challenge before we completed this evening. She has really let me down because I, I did have high hopes for her this week. With that said, the girl that is most unlikely to be a teen beauty queen is Sarah. What it really came down to for us as a judging panel was really your attitude. It just seemed that you weren't really up for this. You didn't really engage. You forgot to bring your makeup and, um, you know, it just kind of sent a message that you, weren't, that you weren't into the challenge. Thank you for being a part of the process and you're now free to leave. Thank you. I want to be me. Be the way I am, the way I do my hair, the way I dress, no makeup. The day I knew that I was gonna go. While Sarah's dream of representing England in the Miss Teen International pageant is over, one of the remaining girls is about to take a step closer. Well, girls, the, the judges have given this a lot of thought, but after much deliberation, this week's teen beauty queen is Laura. Congratulations, Laura. Job well done. There you go. Looks perfect on you. What do you think? I'll lose a tracking. Oh, yay. Happy to hear that. Okay. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we'll go ahead and give these to you as well. Be sure and put those in water. Job well done, Laura. One girl down, eight to go, and it's only going to get tougher. You know what? I want to tell the whole group to step it up. They need to appreciate this opportunity they've been given because there are millions of girls that would, that would love the chance to participate in, in a challenge like this. And I really want to make them aware of what's before them. In the coming weeks, it's up to Michelle to groom the girls for pageant success. In five weeks' time, one of them will become the first ever Miss Teen England International. But which one? Next time, Michelle gets tough. Why are you looking at each other and laughing? We're not messing around. This is a competition. The girls prepare to champion a cause in front of a critical audience. And I was just sick in the toilet, but I think that was my nerves. I'm scared. I just want a shot of our and I'll be fine. But will they stand up for what they believe? I was in pain watching her up there. 